Hello, my name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm gonna be filming my October wrap-up. So happy Halloween! October has been a super super crazy month for me work-wise. <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard from my vlogs. Basically what happened this month was that I got promoted to assistant manager on October 1st in my restaurant and then 12 days later they came in and told me that they're pulling my manager out of my store and taking him to another location and they want me to move up to store manager of my restaurant. Oh my god, it's been crazy. So I've had a hecka hecka busy month, but I did manage to read nine books this month. So special thanks to the Spookathon for making me read at least three of these books. So as I said, this month I was able to read nine books, which amounted to this many pages. For genres, I read six thrillers and then one sci-fi and two romances. As far as my ratings went, they were all over the place. So I gave three books five stars. I gave one book four star, one book three star, and four books two stars. So like my ratings this month were definitely on the lower end. <laughs> Um, and then male versus female authors, I read seven female authors and only three male authors. And the numbers don't add up to nine because there was one book that had a male and a female author. Do you guys ever put water in a coffee mug? Because it's fantastic. It keeps the water so cold. The first book I read this month is The Cheerleaders by Kara Thomas. This is a young adult thriller mystery book. It follows these cheerleaders in this small town of Sunnybrook five years ago. All of the cheerleaders in this small town died and but like two of the girls were in a really bad car accident two of the girls were murdered at the same scene and then one of the girls killed herself and it all happened within like a month of each other and so this book takes place five years after the events when you're following the younger sister of one of the cheerleaders the one that killed herself and she's trying to find out if all of these deaths were connected in some way and oh my god you guys i fucking love this book like i loved it and like i was shocked that i loved it so much because i usually don't like young adult thrillers this was probably the best young adult thriller i've read so far i just loved it so much it was action-packed i was second guessing where it was going the whole time like i couldn't figure out where it was going the ending of this book gave me fucking chills like the way it ended i was like yes oh my god i didn't see it coming and it was just epic i ended up giving this one five out of five stars it was great this second book that I read this month is Vengeful by Victoria Schwab and this is the sequel, the second book to Vicious, literally one of my favorite books of all time. Follows Victor Vale and Eli Ever on their journey of being badass freaking superheroes. This book really dives into the difference between a hero and a villain and these these characters are definitely anti-heroes. This book was just so cool. It was so cool. It was like watching an action movie. It was just as good as the first one. Like I loved it so much. Like Victor Vale is one of my favorite fictional characters in existence. Like I love him. He's so badass. He's so cool. And I loved Eli in this too. Like, loved learning about more about his childhood and how like him and Victor met. The action scenes at the end of this book actually gave me chills. I read 450 pages of this book in one day. I could not put it down. I loved it so fucking much. I gave this one an easy five out of five stars. Like it was my favorite book of the month by far. It was just, it was so good. Third book I read this month is Sadie by Courtney Summers, a young adult thriller. Again, I feel like I only get in the mood to pick up young adult thrillers at this time of year. This one follows this girl named Sadie who her younger sister was murdered. And so she is like on a mission to go and find the dude that killed her sister and she's gonna kill him herself. And it kind of reminded me of like the female of the species in that way just because she is like getting revenge for her sister, you know? The thing that's cool about this one is that it's told half through Sadie's perspective and then half through these podcasts that are about the events that happened. Unfortunately, this one ended up being just okay to me. I do think this one was a little overhyped. Definitely some trigger warnings in this book that I was not expecting like this book got way way more dark than I thought it would I actually liked the podcast part of it so much better than Sadie's point of view Like I found Sadie's point of view parts to drag so much and just I don't know like I couldn't connect with Sadie So I ended up giving this one three out of five stars. Like, it was okay Like I can appreciate the story, but like I wasn't as hooked and obsessed with this as everybody else seems to be. The fourth book I read this month is What If It's Us by Becky Albertalli and Adam Silvera. This was one of my most anticipated books of the year. It follows these two boys, Arthur and Ben, 
who both live in New York City. So then the first part of this story is Arthur and Ben trying to find each other again in New York City. Like they meet once and they really hit it off but they don't get each other's information before they like take off again and then they're like spending a lot of the book trying to find each other again in New York which was really fun. But then after they do eventually get together I felt like they were so cringy and like all of their dates were so like cliche and like just and there was no chemistry and it was just awkward. This one actually ended up being pretty disappointing to me unfortunately and I ended up giving this one two out of five stars which sucked because I really wanted to love this one. The fifth book that I read this month is The Lies We Told by Camille Away and this is the first book that I read during the Spookathon. This one is a thriller. It follows like two different point of views so it has two different timelines going on. So one of the timelines takes place in the 1980s and it follows this mom who has this daughter that's very like sketchy. Like she has like this very like weird dangerous kind of behavior for a kid. Like she's lighting people shit on fire. And then the other point of view, the present time, and it's about this girl who her boyfriend has recently gone missing and she's trying to figure out where he went and what happened to him. And with him, he had an older sister like 10 years ago that disappeared from their family and like never talked to them again. You're trying to figure out how these two completely random point of views are kind of connected in some way. This was also my October book of the month pick this month and I am so glad I picked this one because this one was fucking crazy. It's just such a page turner. Oh my god, it was just so shocking like and I was wrong. Like I thought I had this book figured out. I was like that is the most obvious plot twist ever and then I did it and it was so great. Like I could not predict where this went. It was so exciting and it was so unexpected and it was just so so good. So I loved this one. I ended up giving this one five out of five stars. So the sixth book I read was Black Hole by Charles Burns and, and this one is a graphic novel. And it's all like black and white and it takes place in the 1970s. It follows like a bunch of random teenagers and there's basically this STD going around these kids that is really creepy and it does like really weird shit to your body. Not like a normal STD but like you grow like tails and shit and you grow like scales on your body and just I will give this book credit for being extremely creepy like I was definitely creeped out when I was reading this book and some of the imagery in this you know is very unsettling like story was so uninteresting and like didn't go anywhere I don't know it was just so weird and it was so repetitive because like these teenagers literally just do drugs and then have sex and then do drugs and have sex and like there's no storyline happening here really it's just like it's a lot of creepy things i feel like it could have been so much better so i ended up giving this one two out of five stars all right the seventh book i read this month is watching you by lisa jewel and this is an arc that i got sent from Atria Books. This book comes out December 26th. This book got published in the UK already in July this year, but it doesn't publish in America until December. Now I was so fucking excited to read this book because Lisa Jewell is one of my new favorite authors. And so this is a thriller and it takes place in this town where it follows just a bunch of different people in the town. And so the main protagonist, her name is Joey, and then she's living with her brother right now and his wife. It just follows a bunch of different people in this town, in this community. In between chapters, you're getting snippets of this like police interview where they're interviewing the main character, Joey, the protagonist, about this night that she met the neighbor, Tom, like in a motel room and like something happened that night and somebody was murdered that night and you're trying to figure out what exactly happened. And so there's a lot of different um, like forbidden relationship type things happening in this book as well. This one is probably my least favorite Lisa Jewell book out of the three that I've read so far, but this one was still really good and really interesting. It just didn't have the same like emotional punch, I guess, that her books usually have with me. I mean, of her books, I've only read Then She Was Gone and I Found You and those are two of my favorite fucking books ever. So like this one isn't exactly like up there on the same level as those books in my opinion, but this one was also still really good, really fun to read, and really like spooky and perfect for this season. So I ended up giving this one four to five stars and I still like highly highly recommend this one. The eighth book I read this month is The Girl He Used to Know by Tracy Garvis Graves and this one is also an arc that I was sent by St. Martin's Press and this one comes out in April 2019. Contemporary romance story. If so 
half the story takes place in the 90s and then the other half of the story takes place in the early 2000s and it's kind of like a second chance love story so it's about this couple who met in college in the 90s and then they kind of like lost touch and then they're reconnecting again in the early 2000s it's been like 10 years so the one thing about this book that i really really appreciated is that the main character in this book annika the girl um, has autism or she's like on the spectrum of having autism and i feel like that's so rare to find especially in romance novels but just in books in general like finding characters especially females that are on the autism spectrum is really rare so i really appreciated that about this book and it definitely made her character very unique other than that aspect of the book this book was so boring and dull and exactly like every other romance you've ever read in your life <laughs> which was disappointing because you know i was really looking forward to this and everybody was saying this was really like emotional i really disliked the ending of this book i feel like this was the author's way of trying so desperately to make you cry and make you feel emotionally invested and, like the author definitely took some creative liberties at the end here and i just did not like it and these characters just didn't have any chemistry like they were so boring to read about and I don't know this book was just such a snooze fest which sucked because I really wanted to like this so. so I ended up giving this one two out of five stars as well and the last ninth book that I read this month is the seven and a half deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton this one is a thriller mystery novel that's told in clues so like the whole story takes place on one day it follows this main character who wakes up in different bodies every day and repeats the same day trying to figure out who the killer is and he's just repeating the same day like same scenarios over and over again in the body of a different person that was involved that day i was really fucking excited to read this unfortunately i ended up dnfing this book at about 100 pages in oh my god this writing style is so hard to get into i guess this writing style just really isn't for me like it's so hard for me to read something like this like i've tried reading this book three different times and every time like i had so much time to read and i could not read it i was getting distracted every like two seconds like as cool as some of the aspects of the story are a lot of it was also kind of confusing to me i just couldn't get into this book which was so frustrating because i wanted to love this and i feel like this book was almost written in a way that felt more like a fantasy to me than a mystery and maybe that's why i struggled so much trying to get into this and so i ended up giving this one two out of five stars and i gave it two as opposed to one because again this is one of those situations where it's probably just me and not the book's fault because I just don't really enjoy this style of writing. So as far as like sticking to my October TBR went, I mean to be fair I didn't include these two books on my actual TBR but these are arcs that I didn't know I was going to be receiving in October. Like all four of these books were on my October TBR so and then other books that were on my October TBR that I didn't get to read is American Psycho and Saw Kill Girls but I did start both of these books and I got like 20 or 30 pages into both of them and they were just not something I was in the mood for this month. The writing in American Psycho is something that I wasn't really expecting like it's just very dense. I still want to read American Psycho but like it's just it's gonna have to be at a different time. <laughs> and then Saw Kill Girls, like, this book is a little more fantasy than I was expecting, which isn't also something I was in the mood for this month, and that's what happened with those, but I am still happy with the nine books that I read this month, even though I was disappointed by most of them. Those are all of the books that I read this month. I'm at 9,600 subscribers right now, and so I'm nearing towards 10,000 and so I guess I just wanted to know like um, you know when I hit 7,000 subscribers earlier this year I did a Q&A for that and so I'm just wondering like is that something you guys would want to see from me again if I hit 10,000 subscribers because it was really fun for me to do that last time and I just think that that's a really fun way to celebrate a like milestone on my youtube channel so let me know what your thoughts are about that let me know what your favorite books that you read this month were how many books did you read this month what was your least favorite book and if you read any of these books that i read then please let me know what your thoughts on, are on them yeah my favorite book by far was vengeful this is like one of my favorite books of the year i just loved it so much yeah, thank you guys so much for watching as always and i will see you guys next time